the other day I was uh, browsing uh, Twitter, um, just creeping around, and I visited an old friend's uh, Twitter feed. Uh, it was Adrian Brightmore, and I saw that he had posted a link. It was a video of the globe um, with earthquakes occurring across it. Um, it was very interesting to see. Um, I've seen similar things like that before. Uh, but one thing that kind of caught my attention, um, or interest rather, would be uh, what would happen if you could record or if you could visualize uh, earthquakes that happen um, on the Earth and also within the Earth. Because uh, geological surveys that record such things, um, like the U.S. Uh, geological Service, they will, they will publish a depth with each earthquake that showed up. So what I did is I very laboriously scraped uh, the USGS's uh, earthquake database uh, from 20 or from 2000 until uh, I think a few days ago, um, and then I loaded that into spawn chunks. I'll show you what the data looks like, and basically it will be loaded. It will be um, spawned within this globe of the Earth. Uh, this is courtesy of Adrian Brightmore as well. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Uh, but it'll, you'll be, it'll spawn within, and you'll actually be able to see the depth of each earthquake within this globe. So let me go ahead and get it started. I was planning on making a fancy book for doing this, but then I decided I didn't really care that much. All right, here we go. And let me switch. You can see that the armor stands are uh, appearing. So let me switch game mode. So you can see it's very interesting. Uh, this is the uh, west coast of the United States. There is South America. You can see there's these earthquake swarms that are just constant, always happening. Um, the the way the world map lines up is not exactly 100% accurate. Um, I think it's because it was a projection, a map projection that was wrapped over a globe, so it didn't really turn out quite right. But uh, there's some interesting structures that you can see. Um, I'm not, I don't know how accurate this data actually is. I think the depths need to be, be normalized, because I was noticing some points ending up outside. But you get like these little clusters here and there. And there seem to be a whole lot within the actual core of, of the Earth, and I don't know if this is actually accurate or not. Um, but the uh, each each point is colored um, based off of the magnitude. So magnitude 8 and above are the dark red, and then it, it progresses from there, um, from dark red to orange to yellow to green, and the light blue or the packed ice, that's those are magnitude 1 or less. So you can see there are huge swarms of them down here. And this is 17 years of data um, every day, basically. Um, again, I don't know if this data is quite right, <laughs> but it's very interesting anyway. Uh, yeah. And every now and then you'll see these swarms of earthquakes around uh, Europe. It's very, very peculiar. I also wonder if this has something to do with um, develop, developed nations, how well they're able to track and record earthquake, because there seem to be a lot constantly um, over here on the west coast of the United States, and I think that's because the USGS has a lot of seismo uh, seis uh, seismographs in the region, and you might think the same thing too um, with Europe. Uh, Japan doesn't seem to have as many as you would think, so again, I'm not sure about the data, but it's very interesting. So that's this would be Korea up here, Japan, the Philippines, Australia. Seem to be a lot on Australia's east coast. Yeah, east coast. There's New Zealand down there. No, west coast. Sorry, west coast. It's hard to you know, <laughs> say, tell which way is which. Yeah, and there's, it's very, really interesting. Uh, if there are any size, uh, ge uh, geologists or whatever field of study, whoa, whoa, what's happening? 
Whoa. Yeah, there are a few there are a few days that are very heavy in uh, earthquake activity. So every now and then you'll get a huge swarm. I also don't have any way of tracking. Oh, did it stop? Oh, I think it actually stopped. There might be a bug. Let me go. And this is a good time to go back to zero zero and see what uh, the data looks like. And this might load very slowly because this is a lot of data. Oh, oh, here we go. So this is all the data loaded in. It starts in the back corner over here, then it progresses along the x-axis. Um, if you're interested in how I do it, basically it'll spawn in a block on top. The next block will set it to air. Next one will uh, kill uh, old armor stands. It tries to keep about three days worth of armor stands um, active, otherwise it's way too much for Minecraft to handle. Next it sets uh, the next one up over here uh, with a redstone block so that keeps propagating the it down the line and then everything beneath that is spawning an armor stand at the relevant location with the custom name and um, either a block on the head or arm and either a small or large armor stand depending on how uh, depending on the magnitude of the earthquake so these all chain um, I had to use a special algorithm because some days had more than 250 some odd earthquakes like here's one does it go all the way down Yep, so you can see it, it'll go down, it'll follow the chain to the bottom, it'll flip and it'll go back up, and it, it'll flip around up at the top too. So I had to, I had to include that into the uh, algorithm. Huh. I wonder where it stopped. I'm curious. Yeah, this is... Um, I think it was 1 million data points and it still didn't use up the entire chunk uh, or spawn chunks. What's this? Oh, I see. Uh, it stopped right here. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me continue it. Next one over. happening uh, Minecraft may have just crashed well, that crashed Minecraft let's see if we can get back in oh wait all oh, right there we go okay looks like it's continuing until it hits another snag yep so I think it's kind of interesting to show this sort of stuff. Um, hopefully this will get some younger audiences interested in visualization. Um, kind of as crappy as it is. Usually what scientists would do is they'd prefer to do this on in uh, tools like um, for like R, like an R, uh, visualization tools in R. Or some web pages will do it using D3JS or 3JS or even high charts. I thought it'd be interesting to show it in Minecraft. You can you can actually do some graphing in Minecraft. It's not the greatest, but it, I think it gives you some more versatility that you would get uh, elsewhere. Whoa, yeah, my, Minecraft is not the most performant thing in the whole world. There's an earthquake swarm. I wonder if that's Oklahoma <laughs> fracking. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope this is interesting. I don't think uh, I might include the scripts I used for um, for scraping the data and then generating the the spawn structure. Uh, I don't know how useful it would be though, because the data is kind of pretty highly uh, uh, cut.
customized. Um, but yeah, anyways. I know it's been a long time since I've released the videos. I don't think I'll be releasing many very often in the future. Uh, Minecraft just isn't that fun for me anymore. But, yep. Anyways, have a good day. Bye-bye.